Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. It's time to start planting up the front yard. Frant? Front yard, not frant. Now, every year I do like a drift of impatience that go around this columnar blue spruce and comes all the way through here and down there and also underneath this Japanese maple. Japanese maple is dead. Uh, it was either versillum or it uh, root wrapped and choked itself out. I'm not sure which one happened. Either way, is what it is. Um, I have a chainsaw, but it won't start for some reason, so that's gotta go in and get fixed. So I'm waiting for a tree trimming service to come, to come out, get this out of here, and actually like get the stump out, remove a bunch of roots so I can replant there. Problem is, with this being gone, there's more sun than normal, so things are dying. I don't know, I can't really plant this area up, so that's gonna have to wait. That's going to have to wait a while, because there's like a three-week delay in getting someone out here to remove the tree. But I can get this area done, which hopefully I will, and then this long berm down here. Now, last year I put a couple of these strawberry vanilla hydrangeas in here, hydrangea paniculitis. Do great with the full sun, they've grown a bunch, I cut them back, they're still growing, they're looking great. Normally I plant this up with sun patience. I'm going to do something a little bit different this year though. Because last year with the growth from this red bud that's up here, really spreading out, casting a lot of shade, but it still gets a decent amount of morning sun, and then as the sun shifts during the summertime, some sun does come through the sides, so it's a little bit of a wonky area, like the impatience that were planted alongside near the driveway, they got a little bit scorched, but I think that was because the sprinklers have micro-irrigation in here, some water was settling on the leaves, so that's an easy thing to fix. And I have really hard clay soil, so every year when I plant this up, I go ahead, I add in some gypsum, a spoma biotone, osmocote, or just any continuous release fertilizer. I add that into all the holes I dig in between each one of these hydrangeas. I'm going to throw in a couple of the alacaja luteas. I think they have a nice lime green color. They have that lovely yellow variegation on the foliage. It'll kind of light the area up a little bit. And these are just divisions I took from my larger one, which means they're going to have a little bit of recovery to do, but it should be fine. They'll outgrow, they should outgrow speed-wise, the begonias. I'm going to go ahead and do dragon's wing begonias in here. They get nice and tall, really lush. They're just really pretty plants that I think will do well here. I wanted to try the surefire begonias because they can take a lot of sun and a lot of shade, but I can't, I can't find them anywhere. So dragon's wings. I love dragon's wings. It'll look pretty. And then when I'm done, I'm going to mulch everything over. So I'm not too terribly worried about the occasional weed and whatnot that's in here. That'll all be gone. And my favorite tool bulb auger. These guys are so overgrown from their six packs. You can see they're getting really big, but the bulb auger should still dig an ample enough size hole for them. So this will actually probably hopefully go pretty quickly. But now that all those holes are dug, they're not perfectly spaced. There were like some roots and things I had to go around, but it will do the begonias will fill in just fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this gypsum here and go through and lightly sprinkle it into each one of these holes in the entire surrounding area. This is just going to help break down the clay I have a lot of clay, hard, hard clay, and I'd like to loosen my soil. It helps loosen compacted soil and has lots of calcium in it, which is fantastic. That calcium helps build stronger roots, stronger foliage, gets the plants just taken off a little bit faster. I'm not just going to scatter it like that. That's just, just an example. And then once that gypsum's down, I'm going to go ahead and spread in some of the slow-release fertilizer. Not a ton, just a little bit. Help give things a boost. This is Espoma Biotone Starter. I went ahead and I just put it in that empty hanging basket just to make things a little bit easier for bringing things out front. I'm going very light with the starter because I'm going to add in a little bit more when I start to fill these holes in too. In years past, I've gone through with these holes and actually added some garden soil into the mix, but I've been amending it for so many years that I'm not really hating how the soil looks. It's a little bit light, but I think that it's fine. I don't think I really need to go in here and add much of anything to it. I'm filling the inside of these holes to make sure they're not too hard because I don't want to create like a clay pot in the ground. It feels nice. It feels loose. It should be okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my begonias here and plop one in each hole. Fill it back in. And I probably should have mentioned that when I was making sure to spread out the gypsum, the biotone starter, the slow release fertilizer, that I was trying to hit the outer perimeter of the holes as well. But you can see better over here. So see, that's just going to sit right in there and just boom. So easy. You can see the growth on some of these guys is a little bit wonky because they were in these six packs just a smidge too long. But after being in the sun for just a little while, 
week or so, they should straighten back out, be totally fine. And I don't know how well you can see, but some of these holes are a little bit too deep. So we went a little bit overboard with the auger. Too much moisture gathering up around the base of the plant with the begonia can really spell disaster. So with these holes that are a little bit too deep, sorry, it's not quite in frame, but my hand's dirty. So I'm just gonna have to make it work. I'm making sure, let me back it up. There we go. I'm making sure that you can see they're just a little bit above. I'm kind of trying to do that with just about all of them. I don't want any of these totally flush with the ground or below it. So I'm still going to be mulching over here. And like I said, I don't want water building up around these because it can just make them rot when it gets really hot outside. <laughs> oh, turns out that the water on the side of my house isn't working. I need to get a Y adapter. So I have my flex hose here hooked up to the backyard. This will just have to do. I wanted to go ahead and film this now, though. It'll be a couple days so I can make it to the store to go get a new adapter for everything with the alacages. They're unhappy. That's normal for being divided up. They'll spring back. It'll take them a couple of weeks, but it's going to take the begonias a couple of weeks to get going too. So I'm going through watering everything in, and um, I don't think it would be smart for me to plant the impatience up in the front area when I don't have a hose to water them with. I don't think this one's quite going to reach, and I don't really feel like having to attach this and bring around the side of the house every day. So I'm going to give that a couple days. Really, just tomorrow I can run to the store and grab that. It's getting kind of late in the afternoon, so I will stop here. Might throw down some mulch. I don't know. If I do, then we will come back with a before and after of that. And there we go. It's been a few days. Had a lot of other things going on. This one leaf here on the alacage I got a little bit scorched, but I these were divisions, so I kind of expected those to wilt out a little bit when I threw them in the ground. This one over here is already thrown up a new leaf. I put a little stake down around both of them. It's actually just a twig, but does the job to help hold them still while they're putting their roots out. That helps a lot. You don't want the plants moving all over the place when they're trying to put their roots down. But a nice fresh layer of mulch and there's just weeds coming up like crazy because that's that time of year. That's just part of gardening. That's no big deal. The plan here is that these begonias, each one should get, I'd say roughly anywhere from 18 to 24 inches high and about that wide fill and it'll just be these tall mounds of begonias with their pretty pink flowers coming down on them underneath those paniculatas. It's going to be beautiful. I'm going to do something over here too, probably not right now, but um, I want to add something over here with like a pop of color, maybe some coleus and stuff. And over here was where the issue was with my irrigate, not my irrigation, just my hose. Got the wide adapter on there, one that runs to the back, one that runs to the front, which comes around to a spigot over here around the side that I have a timer that I need to set up on. That'll run the drip to everything. And I have another hose hooked up for the planters I have up here on the front porch, which these have their own videos. So a little bit of a spoiler here, but those will hopefully, the videos will be out before this. Now... And do this area. Look at all these weeds. These weren't here in the beginning of this video just a few days ago when I was showing this off. Gonna have to clean those up. Some of them are pansies that have reseeded from last fall, but there's also some little bitty red buds popping up over here. Like a lot of them. Lots and lots of little red buds popping up over here. And I don't think that it's the case, but some of these. Like, a lot of them, actually, I don't know, let me see if I can get them a little bit closer. Those look like impatient seedlings to me. Have you guys ever grown impatience from seeds? Oh, that didn't, that wasn't a very successful weed pull. This is very similar to what impatient seedlings look like, and it's not totally impossible that they would have reseeded, especially with the area being heavily mulched. Yeah, uh, but I already have my flats of impatience, so... I could be like, let me just let the weeds grow and see what they do. I don't think I'm going to do that because I've already purchased all of these. These are pink, like orange, pink, coral color in person. Very orangey red on camera. I wish I could find the right, like I've been messing with the color coding and stuff, the color correcting to make that come through, but I haven't quite been able to figure it out. So uh, I have all my holes dug over here. I need to go through just like I did with the other one, throw down the gypsum, some slowly's fertilizer, Espoma biotone starter. I'm also going to toss out some garden soil into this area too, because the soil hasn't loosened up quite as much as it has over the berm. And then I'll start dropping these guys in and mulch it. I get, but should I, what do I, what do I do with the seedlings. I don't know. I should probably just pull them, right? Maybe. I don't know. What I decided on 
is I'm going to go through pull anything that's obviously not what I want to be growing in the area like these tiny little red buds and things like that and have some clover down here the things that are obvious like here's some nut sedge which I would prefer to spray that actually the others all these little guys down here I'm pretty certain that those are impatient. They will reseed. It's not unheard of. Usually I think that I get my mulch and everything down and my planting done before they have a chance to come up. I'm in zone 6A, 6B, we're kind of right on the border and it just, it takes a lot of time and heat to get them going. And this is the latest I've ever gotten around to planting up my impatience over here in this area. So chances are that is what these um, little seedlings are. They're more than likely impatience. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to mulch this area right now anyways, even though I really want to, <laughs> because I think it just makes everything look so much more finished and pretty. But with this Japanese maple coming out, hopefully next week, I think, I don't want to throw mulch down underneath it and then have someone, they're going to come out and like dig the area out and everything. Just seems like a waste of time, doesn't it? So I'm going to hold off. I'll go ahead and plant the new impatience, maybe from like here and over where there aren't as many seedlings. I'll put some mulch down because it helps hold in moisture, so it's good to put the mulch down. But like in the little areas like over here and over there, I just won't really fuss with it just for like a week and see what they do. And then I'll throw the mulch down. Seems like a good compromise. It's mostly just honestly out of my own curiosity. The thing is, the mix I did last year... Nothing like what I'm planting up this year. I only have three colors here. Last year, I mean, I just grabbed flats of assorted colors. I didn't see those. I got all these on sale. So I was like, this will work because they're super cheap. I usually like to use more colors in this because I will drive myself mad with only three colors trying to establish a pattern. So I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go through each flat at a time, grab my plants, and I'm going to randomly scatter them because that seems to be... At least for me, the only way to keep myself from going absolutely crazy. I'm trying to be like, okay, I need an orange here, white here, a pink here, an orange here, a white here, a pink. No, I can't do it. That's too much. And now I'm getting my drip going. I need to repair that hose. Just sort of part of it. Every spring, got to come through and make some repairs. Wait, what's going on here? I just, it was spraying out of that. What, what happened? I apparently just had the wrong hose going, and didn't realize that that was spot with a Y, so I just went ahead and tied that off, twist the little top down, turns it off. And I use a fan sprayer over here. The reason I don't use individual emitters is because I don't have the water pressure. I've tried and I just can never get enough out to everything, so I use the misters, the micro irrigators, instead of the drip heads, that, at least in my front yard. In the backyard, I use mostly drip heads. I don't want to forget that I ran. One over here to my yucca last year. Need to get in here and clean some of these leaves out, but that's going just fine. Someone with a water bottle back here. And then one, two, three, four. Need to space them out a little bit, but they're working. There we go. I think that's a little bit better. Just about everything's getting hit. I really would prefer to use drip heads out here because, like I had mentioned, in the beginning of this video, sometimes having the water spraying right onto the foliage can be problematic. But I did have the dragon's wings up uh, against the house up front, like by the those pillars last year, and they were getting hit by the misters, and they did fantastic. That seems kind of like a waste, though, doesn't it? I don't, there's nothing really over here. Adjust that down. See if I have enough hose to move it forward. I don't. I do not have enough hose to move it forward, so I'll have to pick up a different head for that that does a fan spray instead of all around. Yeah, this is good. It'll do for now. The alakaj is not really getting hit, is it? Oh, that's just because this one kind of lost its centering. That should do that just fine. The alakajas don't like as much water as the kalakajas anyways, but when it's hot out, they can take it. And I had alakajas out here last year. They did wonderfully. So that should be good. Oh, I'm so happy to have this done. Well, it's not done. I still need to mulch and pull weeds and everything, but it's good enough for right now. This is what I have left over. These normally would have gone underneath the Japanese maple. The same thing with all of these caladium bulbs, which I purchased back in like February, because that's when they get them in at Sam's Club really cheap, and there's always way more than 25 bulbs in these bags, but 
I don't know what to do with them now because the, the Japanese maple's gone. They're going to get too much sun. I have always planted them on both sides. The ones that go on the side that doesn't didn't have the shade from the Japanese maple didn't grow much. It was too much sun for them. So I have to figure that out. That's to, it's supposed to deter the birds from pooping in the pool. Didn't work. So now I just have an alligator head hanging out in my backyard. So uh, these impatience, though, I'm pretty sure I'm still going to end up planting these underneath the... Well, nothing. The Japanese maple's not there. But in a week or so, when that's gone, I'll plant those out in that area. So I have to hold on to those for now. And may as well have a look at what I've done, right? Got impatience planted up here underneath this Japanese maple. And I think they look... They'll look better when they fill out some more. I mean, these red buds, I just keep coming out here and pulling them and pulling them. I need to wet the soil a little bit more because I'm not getting the roots, so I need to do that. Got a nice drift of the impatience coming through here. I could tuck some caladiums back here and maybe back there, but I just feel like that would look kind of odd just having them there and there and not underneath the maple like I used to. And I am going to be replanting something here. I just, I don't know what yet. And it won't be a blood good Japanese maple, that's for sure. It got way too big for this location as it was. Uh, so yeah, that's all done. Just need to water in. So what I'm thinking about doing, since I need to get these caladium bulbs like actually planted, just to get them a start at least, I'm just gonna toss them in here for now. They're, it's not a permanent thing, just that way they can at least get going. If I want to lift them, then I'll do that later. Oh, well, you going swimming, Tobes? Yeah, a little swim party, Toby. Yeah, a little swim party, Tobes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good boy, Tuck. You know, he's had a little bit of trouble getting in the pool this year, so I get really excited when I see him get in there. I am going to do this very, very quickly because the forecast just changed. It was supposed to be like 10 to 20% chance of storms throughout the day, and now they're like, oh, no, no, it's going to rain, and it's going to rain like all day. So I'm just kind of making a shallow sort of cavity in here, a little trough to drop these bulbs into. I've gone ahead and dumped my bulbs in here. You can see that the growth and roots are coming out of the same side on some of these, which makes it a little bit confusing. You can see where they were chopped and divided up when they were dug, but if the growth is coming up, that's where I'm putting it. When I'm confused with a bulb, sometimes I'll just lay them on their sides. That can work out just fine. Man, this lavender. I have a lavender over here. What is your name? I got this in one of the vlogs. It's the Elegance Purple Lavender. This thing smells phenomenal, which I know is like lavender smells good, but I can smell it all the way. Like when I have the window open over there for the cats, you can smell it a little bit in the kitchen. You can smell it when you walk outside. Most of the lavenders I've had in the past, like they smell fantastic, but I usually have to be kind of close to them. Like, you know, probably within 10 feet. That might be 10. It smells so good. Hi, my name is Jeff. I get sidetracked very, very easily. Typically, these would need to go like that. Really, the pointy end, which is about right. Right about there. That's the pointy end. That's where those need to be coming up. This is a much easier bulb to decipher. I don't need to put these in any sort of arrangement or anything like that. I just need to get them planted. There we go. How exciting, right? I didn't plant them very deep. Caladiums don't need to be planted very deep anyways. And like I said, I need to be able to lift these out should I decide I'm going to use them in the front yard. There were close to 70 bulbs here. Some of them were teeny tiny little things, but that still counts because they're going to grow. Most of them already are growing. There are only a few. There were like maybe three or four that were kind of mushy. Now, I'm pretty much done with all my repottings. I still have this one pack of stackies left. There, everything else will be in future projects. I'm going to spread some soil and whatnot, but my main thing, the last thing I have to get done today, is I need to move all of the rest of the plants that I, are for future projects and whatnot. I'm going to move all of them into the shade where the drippers are going to hit them. Get them off of the patio. Clear the patio off. It's not going to be like an amazing before and after. In fact, I'm probably not even going to do it on camera because who cares, right? I'm just going to be moving plants. I'm not going to be arranging them like I did last week. It's not going to be something like this in the end. I just need to get them where the sprinklers will hit them because I'm not going to be around to water them. Ah, there we go. Oh, that's so much better. So clean and tidy. All the plants are off the patio. Just moved them to where the sprinklers can get them. Nothing special. I'll do a garden tour, like a brief one, just because it's like the month is almost to it. I don't know what I'm saying. 
The clock's ticking, that's what I'm saying. And I planted, you guys, you gotta wait and see. I shouldn't, what am I doing? Too many spoilers. But clean. So nice to have clean again. I mean, it's not clean, but the plants are off the patio, so it'll get clean. But not right now. I have something I have to do that's really, and what is this over, ow! Don't you just love when you fall down and stand up and then you end up at the beach? This does have something to do with why the nature of this vlog and the last vlog were a little bit more rushed. May have not been too terribly obvious because it's also just kind of like how I do things. I just had to get some things done so I could head out of town and have some vacation time and get the plants ready to be watered automatically and all those fun things. Also, it's like... Me, I, it's early. I can't even talk, I'm sorry. I always like to get to a certain place before I travel. It just makes me feel better about what I'm coming home to. Couldn't quite get there. You know, I would have liked to have had more things in the ground, but you know, as you guys just saw in the video, I couldn't get things in the ground because of the irrigation system. So I'm happy with everything that got done. Down here for a little while, actually it's kind of a nice long trip really. Gonna have lots of beach time, lots of friend and family time. I'm with a lot of people, so I will be vlogging while I'm here, but you know, that's probably gonna be a lot of just the randomness, I would think, but it is vacation, so I would like to find a local Lowe's and check that out. Hopefully find some Heliconias. That's the only thing I'm looking for down here. And this pretty? I love it over here. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to do my best to get a bunch of vlogging done while I'm down here. I can show you guys a bunch of what's been going on and some experiences. I think it's just gonna be a pretty leisure trip though. Not gonna be like other trips where I'm like on boats and doing other activities. Just hanging out, relaxing. That's what's necessary. It's a vacation of rest. So may not be a lot to vlog about. I don't know. I hope there will be, but uh, it's hard to say. Just got here. Keep moving a little bit further and further in as the breeze keeps picking up and messing with the microphone. But yeah, I mean, Obviously, this is the end of this vlog. <laughs> Can't do any more yard work from here. But now y'all understand why I was saying I gotta get things up on the sprinkler systems and just trying to get a few things done specifically so that I can head out and enjoy myself. Relax a little bit. Also, why this vlog is kind of short, I mean very short in comparison to last week's hour-long video. You know, I can't do this every weekend. It's just, it's not possible takes a long time. But every now and then I'll make sure to try and put out some longer videos. This one just had to be a little bit shorter. The vacation vlog, which will be out, I guess next weekend, depending on how much filming I get done. That one might also be kind of short, it just depends. Like I said, I'm here with a lot of people, so may not be that easy to vlog. But we'll see. I'll be posting pictures and whatnot and fun stuff up on my social media, which is linked down below. Follow me and I'll follow you back. I'm on Instagram far more than anything else. Oh, and don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. It makes a huge difference for the videos and for the channel. I appreciate it, so thank you. And subscribe as well. Don't forget to hit the notification bell because I upload multiple times a week. That way you know when new videos come out. And comment down below and say hi. I love talking to everybody. Maybe I can do like a whole entire separate beach house garden tour. Wouldn't that be fun? I'll do that maybe next week. I need to wrap this one up. I hope everybody's doing well. Everything's going beautifully for you and life's just fantastic. And of course, as always and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye!